Since the release of Auto Align One, Sound Radix and Near the Founder have been described as some of the smartest people in the plugin industry. And today, we're going to find out why. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Great Big Plugin Show on PureMix.com. Wherever you're watching from, YouTube, Facebook, thank you for being here. If you are on YouTube, please be sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the notification bell, share it with your mom. I shared it with my mom. Uh, make sure that um, everybody gets to see it and, and hits those buttons. It helps us to keep content like this going and we greatly appreciate it. So today we are checking out Auto Align 2 from Sound Radix, which the original Auto Align is probably one of my most used and favorite plugins um, out there. It basically helps to align uh, phase on multiple mic sources and between different instruments, which is pretty incredible. The original Auto Align had um, a workflow where you would put multiple instances on and then you would send signal from one instance to the other via a bus system inside of the plugin. And while it was perfectly manageable and I used it for years without complaining, they decided that they could improve on that as well as the algorithm that they used to do it. So we're gonna check out the browser um, real quick and look at the website and just go over what this thing actually is. So. Introducing Auto Align 2, radical evolution of modern classic that's become an indispensable tool in many studios around the world. So basically, uh, the whole idea here is, let's say that you have two mics on a guitar amp, right? And one of those mics is slightly back from the other one, or uh, maybe even more so back from it. And if you've ever played around with the distance between two microphones on a source, you've heard comb filtering, which is phase cancellation between different frequencies. You might be perfectly in phase at one frequency point, but then maybe like the low mids are getting fuzzy or the top end's getting weird, those kinds of things. So Auto Align sets out to solve those issues using uh, delay. So by delaying the sound in time to put them, uh, maybe the close mic back with the, uh, the far mic to put them in the same position. But it also does it on a multiple frequency point scale. So we're not just looking at an inverting of the phase, or if you're familiar with the tool like IBP from Little Labs, which is amazing, and I use that during tracking all the time, uh, that is doing a phase shift across the entire frequency spectrum, unless IBP has some, some options to go between low and high, but um, this is basically doing it in the digital realm across multiple frequency bands. So uh, let's, um, let's see what else we got on here, and then we'll head over to Pro Tools and actually check it out. The, uh, the big improvement with Auto Align 2 is that it'll actually look at all the audio that's coming into it and it'll group the microphones or the tracks um, together based on the instrument source. So if you throw this on every track in your session and you hit a line, it's going to look at it and be like, oh, it looks like these tracks are all receiving the same source material and it'll put them in a group together and then process them accordingly. So if you had, say, a uh, multiple mic drum kit, it's going to find all the mics in the drum kit that you put auto align and, and group them together. If you had two mics on a guitar amp in the same session, it will also realize that those two are supposed together and then put them in a separate group as well. Pretty cool. Uh, going down the, just kind of looking at the interface because we have it nice and big here, you can see that um, in group one here, these all look like drum mics, and then we have some, some numbers. So these are the amount of samples that it, the auto align has shifted each microphone to get them better correlated in time with each other. And then to the right of that, we have a bunch of rainbow skittle looking things, uh, which are our spectral phase correlation. So... As it goes, uh, green is regular polarity from my understanding, and red is, if it's fully red, it's completely inverted. And then we have varying degrees of phase shift across multiple frequencies. So that's where we start getting into our rainbow colors, which is pretty cool. Uh, one of the big improvements here is that we no longer have to deal with busing certain uh, instances of the plug into other instances to tell them to look at each other. And once we have that across every single track, we can just hit align one time on one instance of the plugin. It used to be that you had to go through and align on every single instance of the plugin. So now it's a one click workflow, as they say, which is pretty cool. And yeah, other than that, there's some more information. If you're curious about um, some of the more sciencey things that are going on, it explains how it uses filters to do these things, explains absolute phase and all of that. But the best way to figure out anything is to listen to it. So let's do that. I'm going to head over to Pro Tools here, and 
Let's get Pro Tools up on the screen. I've got Auto Align pulled up and I'm working in Pro Tools and this is an important thing. Auto Align 2 has ARA support. And while we're starting to get that in Pro Tools, it's not working fully with everything yet. It works great with Melodyne and we're still waiting for other plugins to kind of get, get into that ecosystem. Uh, while we wait for that, basically when you strap Auto Align across your tracks, you have to feed it about 30 seconds of capture material. So after 30 seconds, it it's feels like it has enough stuff to look at to align all the face. Because I didn't want to make you guys wait right off the bat, I went ahead and did that before the session, but I've currently got the plugin set to off. I've soloed up some drum mics. The session is a song called Jealousy from Brandy and the Alexanders. We uh, recorded this in a Pure Mix live masterclass at MSR Studios in New York before it was unfortunately shut down. And Mick Guzowski was the tracking engineer. So... Right off the bat, we had amazing microphones. We had a uh, mic on an SSL console with tons of outboard Neve 1081s, 1073s, everything, and the kitchen sink was you know, available for him to throw at this session. Mick is an incredible tracking engineer, as you're going to hear in a second. So why would we try to improve upon that? Well, let's find out and see if AutoLine will actually do something better for us or if it's something where we like the natural sound better. So I'm going to hit play, and again, right now, auto-align is not on. It's completely bypassed, so we're going to listen to the raw material. Here we go. Okay, so obviously that's an incredible sounding drum kit right off the bat. You had Mick behind the board. What else do you think is going to happen? Sounds amazing. Uh, great drummer too. Great performance. So I've got auto align strapped across every single mic, and we can see it up here in group one. We've got kick in, kick out, sub kick, snare top, bottom, rack, floor, hat, ride, overheads. So I've done a basic balance on here, but there's no other processing done to this drum kit except for um, just moving faders around, right? So... Let's go ahead and I'm going to play it again. And then after about two bars, I'll switch auto align on. So here we go. Okay, so let me play this section with the tom fill with it off again, and then we'll listen again with it on. So here we go with off. Here we go. So to my ear, what's happening with all of this is it's like taking the focus knob on a camera and rolling it, right? And just bringing the entire sound into focus for it. So, you know, out of focus, right? And then letting the camera focus again. This is what auto align does for me. So um, basically I'm getting more transient punch. I'm hearing individual instruments a little bit better within the kit uh, and any of the cancellation or comb filtering stuff that was happening there is getting fixed on it. We can see as we look through here, the kick in uh, was left in natural phase in the low end and then some stuff was applied up top with some actual flipping around, uh, I don't know, I'm guessing here, but it, you know, somewhere in the 2K-ish range. And then the kick out has got a lot of different stuff going on in the bottom. Same thing on the sub kick as we go. One important thing to point out here, um, if we look at the numbers, we see timing shift on all of the kick mics and then no timing shift on the snare top mic. And that's because Auto Align looked at the signal and it said, we think that the snare is probably the thing that you want in focus. Uh, you have the ability to, to decide that yourself. 
it just naturally wants to do that for you. It thinks that you know you want a nice punchy snare, and then it's aligning everything to that microphone. So that's where our time alignment's coming from. One thing that we can do, let's say that we wanted the kick to be the leader, I can right click on that, and then I can say set as key time. And you'll see all my numbers update over here, and now the kick is at zero samples of adjustment, while the snare top moved 160 samples. If I go back to the snare top, say set as key time, now we see that that 160 sample uh, adjustment has been applied to the kick. So let's take a listen here. I'll play it really quick, another two bars with the snare top um, as the key mic, and then maybe after that tom fill, I'll stop, and then we'll switch over to the kick and we can listen to the difference with that. Here we go. And let's check it out with the kick is the key time. Here we go. And one more time with the snare. Okay, so you can kind of hear the difference between favoring one mic or the other mic, but the important thing to know here is that while AutoAlign makes its, its decisions, you know, right off the bat off of the source material that it's fed, it's not necessarily taking the power out of your hands as the user to decide what's better or what's worse. So there's some other things that we have for fine adjustment here, and I see a question in the chat uh, right from, uh, this one comes from F Phantom. He says, uh, is it interesting to keep the distance or time delay for ambient mics and overhead? And then uh, Phantom Asser says again, my question was more, does Auto Align keep that? So uh, for room mics, uh, what he's kind of saying is, you know, if you, have, if you have far room mics and you like that time delay of like the snare, you hear the direct mic and then there's a slight delay before you hear the reflection uh, coming from the room mic, can you keep that? And the answer is yes, uh, you can. And you actually have a lot more flexibility than just deciding which one of these microphones is your key time. So what's cool about this, if we look at the overheads, if I right click on that, I have a bunch of other options here. And unfortunately, I can't really blow this up. I don't think that that section will increase if I increase the size. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't increase it for you guys on your phones. But under adjustments, we have um, two buttons. We have previous and next, which is super cool. So basically, Auto Align's decided there's actually multiple points that we could make for a phase coherent approach on this. So if I hit next on this, we'll see right now our time delay is set to 112 samples. If I hit next, now it's at 40 samples, and we saw that spectral adjustment shift. So here's 100. Oh, sorry, that's 94. Here's 112. And then here's 40. So if I backstep, there's another step at 94. But going from the original, it's saying your next best option is probably minus 40. So I'll play it again, and I'll switch between the first decision of auto align and then this minus 40 decision. So here we go. So to me, that has a little bit of a tighter sound to it, which is kind of cool. If I want to bring the overheads back in, you know, closer to the kit a little bit, I can do that. And then same thing with room mics. If it brings them in too close, I could push back to a previous step and then get some of that actual natural uh, delay between those mics and the kit back into my sound. So I remember um, showing a few people auto align and... Um, you know, even up a level from that, learning about how people would actually go into a waveform, find the beginning of a transient, and then they would pull the other microphones back, say it was to the snare. They would try to line that transient up on there, and that would do the time, the time alignment. But what would naturally happen every time that you do that is you would lose the natural front to back depth that you would get from a multi-mic situation, which is the whole point of throwing up room mics. You're trying to create this sense of depth and space around it. So with the adjustment feature on here, um, it makes it so you can still get phase alignment and correlation alignment, 
but keep your natural depth uh, from, from each of the microphones. So one other thing to check out here, let me turn it off again and I'll hit play and listen to the balance of the drums. And then when I turn it on, we're gonna, we're gonna analyze the difference between that. So first off, here we go. And then now on. So naturally, the kick drum got louder, the snare got louder. As less of those transients are being smeared, we hear sounds popping out of the mix and popping out of the speakers a lot more. We're not losing the transient to a phase smearing issue. If you've ever soloed up a kick drum or a snare drum or something like that, and you've you know maybe listened to it in solo for a minute, and then you've come out of solo and the snares sort of disappeared, that's because of the phase interaction with other microphones usually or balancing, but uh, you know, it can be a result of the phase stuff. So with this, you don't really have that, but now my balance has changed. So I'm gonna have to adjust and make some decisions about, do I really want the kick and the snare to be that loud? Or do I wanna pull them back in the mix and be more respectful of the tracking balance that Mick might've had while he was making the, making the sounds? Um, so the important note about that is, this is one of the first steps I do on any mix. I check it out and I make a decision of, one, is it better? If it's not better, I'll go in and I'll start just playing around with the settings. But to be honest with you, other than room mics, I haven't really bothered to play around with moving things forward and back because I usually turn it on and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. We have a good drum sound now. And then I'll start working on balances again and all that. But this is one of the first things that I do when I start a mix session because the balances will change so rapidly. If you went through and you did a whole bunch of work on your drums or on other elements in the mix, EQ, compression, all of those things, bus compression, and then you decided, oh, let me put everything in phase. And you did that. Everything's going to be whack, right? Because all the gain staging will be pretty thrown off by it. So uh, that's a whole thing. So let me check in on everybody over in the chat here. Um, good to see you guys. Good to be back here, by the way. We had a couple of weeks off from the show. Um, had a great vacation. And yeah, uh, so SDR says, just shows how much work EQing is saved from a properly aligned phase. Amazing. The other cool thing about this that um, happened for me since I got the first um, auto align is my ear got more in tune with phase issues while I was tracking. So if I was throwing up drums and stuff, um, I was able to tune in a lot quicker to, uh, I think my overheads are out because I'm really losing, like I don't hear as much crack out of the snare in the control room as I heard when I was out there. So what's going on? And then going and playing with moving the overheads up and down or uh, whatever it happens to be. So I find it to be an incredible learning tool as well, which is really cool. Um, let's see. So the, uh, yeah, so uh, F Phantom says, isn't it weird that the kick is 160 milliseconds from the snare? Is that a giant drummer? That would be amazing because <laughs> 160 milliseconds is pretty far. That's several feet, I think, or a couple feet, right? Somebody help me out. But it's actually not milliseconds. We're looking at samples right now. So it shifted 160 samples. If I go down to view here, I can actually change what that offset is shown to me as. So um, right now it's in samples. I can change that over two milliseconds, which is 3.33 milliseconds on that kick. And then I can actually go over to inches as well. And in inches, it's saying that the snare is 45 inches away from the kick which is actually still pretty far. It's not necessarily that, but I guess if you're going at an angle to the kick in mic, maybe, sure. Um, the important thing for me though, is that it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, this would also be suggesting that, uh, well, I did move this. So let me put the, the overheads back to their original adjustment or original time. Okay, so if the snare is zero, it's saying that the overheads were 35 inches above um, the snare mic, which would be what, two and a half feet, some change, something like that. Uh, probably a little bit higher than that, but it doesn't really matter because the whole point is to listen with the ears anyway. And I think it's actually great that they just leave it in samples because a lot of times that's what we're actually moving if we adjusted waveforms. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the important thing for me is that you don't lose the depth of a multi-mic drum kit with this plugin if you need to do some tweaking. If you throw it up, hit a line, you feel like you lost all the depth, then you can go in and tweak it. But it's not just good on drums. Let's go check it out over on the bass here. So 
in this session, let me close auto align for a second. In this session on the base, I've got a DI and an amp track. And I did go ahead and load those into auto align as well. I'm going to turn auto align off and we're just going to listen to the bass for right now. Let's check it out with auto align off. So that's the sum of the two. Let's listen to the DI here and I'm going to go to a section that's a little bit more busy. Here's our amp. And here's the combination. So listen to the DI again, especially when he does that amazing finger vibrato that he's got. Now listen to the combination of the two on that. It's like all the low mid-range body goes away from it. So let's flip auto align on and see what happens. Here we go. And here's off. Again, here's on. That's a pretty cool difference. Uh, getting all the, the woody tone out of that bass to, to come back there, the low mids of that that we heard in the DI so present, um, those are coming back. And uh, that bass tone sounds a lot more round to me, which is great. The amp is actually being more useful to me now, whereas in a lot of cases, sometimes you'll get a DI and an amp track delivered to you for mixing and you'll pull up the amp and just be like, this doesn't work together at all. Maybe you throw it out and you start doing amp, you know, reamping or whatever it happens to be. This is actually making that bass amp track usable to me. Um, obviously you could play around with, with balance differences. Um, I have the bass amp 5 dB below the, the DI or uh, 4 dB below the DI on this one. So maybe it would be a thing where, you know, maybe favor the amp more or whatever, but um, throwing them in line together that would be a, a starting point that I'd rather be at than um, trying to work with, with the balances on those, which is pretty cool. Okay, uh, let's check out some guitar, and then I've got a piano example for us. So I've got this guitar track pulled up. It looks like there was a 57 and a 121 on this guy. And let me take out... Okay, so um, I believe I added these separately and it didn't actually group the guitars together and I've got one on the submix of the bass, which I'm just gonna get rid of. And then let's take these two. They're the only ungrouped guys, but I'm gonna go over to this group section and manual group. I'm gonna say new manual group and now I've got my guitar group. So I need to actually feed this guy some audio. So let's check out that process. I'm gonna make sure I have a 30 second minimum uh, selection. I've got 33 here. Then I'll hit a line. It says waiting for playback. So here we go. Okay, and I got a Pro Tools error. That's weird. Never happens. Okay, uh, so let's see if we got an alignment out of that. So it only moved it, looks like one sample. Let's just do that one more time because I'm not sure if uh, Pro Tools is being nice. Here we go. Okay, so this 57 and 121 were likely 
really, really um, meticulously put together, and I'm sure that those capsules were lined up really well, but let's turn this off anyway and just see what's happening here. I do see a lot of spectral shift on this. So remember our Skittles meter over here. We got a lot of purple Skittles on the bottom with some different colors in the middle, uh, and less so on the, on the 57. So let's see what happens. This is with it off. And here's on. Let's check it out a little further. Here's off. On. Yeah, so it's less of a timing problem on this one, and it's more just using those individual filters across the spectrum to, to say, I'm going to rotate, you know, something like 160 a certain amount of degrees, and then something in the mid-range a, a different amount of degrees, and all that. And I'm hearing a little bit more uh, mid-range definition from using auto-align on it. So that's another cool use case. Let's check it out on piano, because piano is an incredibly complex harmonic instrument. Uh, we also have multiple mics on the organ here, so that might be an interesting thing. But yeah, let's check out our piano. So uh, I'm going to throw auto-align on there, and then we'll ingest it. And if you're on a DAW that has better AR2 support than Pro Tools, uh, this is something that you don't have to worry about as much, you lucky guys. Uh, so I know like Studio One, um, I believe Logic 2, uh, both of those will just, you won't have to go through this process of uh, hitting a line, playing 30 seconds of audio, and then um, waiting for it. It just already has the audio, and it just aligns it right off the bat. So, you guys, I'm jealous of you. Here we go. Man, it's crazy how um, how well that piano player and drummer are just locked in with each other. That's really cool. Uh, we also hear some piano bleed or some drum bleed happening in the background, which is why I was listening to how well they were <laughs> locked in together. But um, one of the cool things about this too, uh, it didn't do it in this case because the bleed was likely too low. But if you have multiple players in the same room, it's going to actually recognize that the drums are bleeding into the other instruments and then align everything um, accordingly. So again, if you had that snare as the key time, it would probably align everybody up to the snare in the time domain, and then it would use its spectral correlation to go across multiple frequency bands and, and get everything working uh, well there. So deals with bleed. That's cool. Uh, all right, let's check this out now. Uh, one more time, I'll play a couple bars off, and then I'll flip it on. Here we go. I'll do it without stopping this time. Here we go. Man, what a sound. That, it sounds great anyway, but um, once you actually flip it in, I'm hearing more low mid definition out of the piano. I'm hearing more of the harmonics pop out of the top. That's really cool. And then uh, let's go ahead and just for the heck of it, let's play around with, with reducing the amount of delay on this and just seeing if we get any you know interesting results. Here we go.
Okay, so that's interesting. I'm hearing more of the upper harmonics of the piano when I've moved it up to 52 samples of, um, of shift. So yeah, again, like I think that it's, um, it's important that with any tool, especially ones that are doing things that um, are incorrectly called AI, they haven't called this AI, but there's a lot of plugins that do automatic stuff like this. And it's important to always check the work of the machine, right? So um, go through, play with different options, and don't just rely on it to do everything perfectly yourself. You might only be making one or two percent, you know, um, improvements. But I've heard a lot of people argue uh, about their purchases for very expensive outboard gear because it just does that five percent. Not anybody on this live stream. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, so let's see if anybody is uh, checking out in the comments. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. I've got one more example for us. We're going to go over to our song from Illiterate Light called Sweet Beast. This is tracked by the one and only Vance Powell, um, a man who uh, definitely knows his phase. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take off all of the auto align instances on our previous track. Grab these guys, and then we'll put them up on our tracks in the other song. So I have it all inside of the same session here. So Okay, we're taking off all those. All right, no more auto-align. Let's go over to Sweet Beast. And we'll take it across all of our drum mics here. We got some room mics in this one, so we can check out everybody's concern about the depth on room mics. Putting auto-align on. In Pro Tools, I have to do it on both the stereo and the mono tracks. There you go. All right. So I've got um, this mono drum mic uh, muted down here and this taste mic muted as well. He's got natural effects going on with this ta the taste mic, so I don't think that's going to be a useful example. We might play around with the mono mic in a second. but um, All right. So i got to feed it audio, so you guys are going to hear the unprocessed sound while it's learning. So here we go. Okay, so we fed it enough audio. It's going through and aligning all of our microphones right now. And let's see what happens. All right, so snare smash. It was like, what's going on with that? I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm not going to deal with you right now. And it took it out of the group. Snare smash, if we just listen to that microphone, here it is. So that's an effect that Vance printed down because he's freaking amazing uh, during the tracking session. And Auto Align was like, I, that's not part of the actual sound. So we'll mute that microphone for right now. And uh, looking at the, the adjustments that it did here, it said the snare is the key time again. Um, it's adjusted our room mic uh, in time, our overheads, all the other guys, the, the kick and everything else. So um, let's take a listen. I'll play a couple bars off and then we'll flip it on. Here we go. Okay, so I heard a few things with that. Some things came more in focus, and then uh, some things that I lost were the low-end bloom of the kick drum. That happens out in the rooms. It goes wide. It's amazing, and it's one of my favorite things that Vance does. He always has these long-sounding drums. Uh, and what I feel like it did was it took some of the Vance out of the Vance. And we don't want to take Vance out of Vance. So 
Um, also, guys, this drummer plays standing up. That's incredible. He's got a pretty good groove for that. Uh, so I'm going to go over to these room mics and let's play around with the shift and see if we can get some of that bloom back. So I'll do uh, bypass and then I'll bring it in and then I'll start playing with the time shift. Here we go. Yeah, so hopefully you heard that um, kind of chokes up the kick sound a little bit. It doesn't really bloom out in the room as much. So let's uh, let's go over to the rooms and see if we can fix some of that. So I'm just going to loop a little section here. Here we go. Okay, so that gave me back the, the low end bloom of that whole thing. It's not choking me as much anymore. What's up, Smeg? Smegog? Smegog? Semog? Semog in the chat. <laughs> good to see you guys. Hey, ATN, good to see you. Um, yeah, so, so that's the thing is like, uh, I'm bringing back some of that natural depth of the room by just playing around with the shift uh, over here. And it's nice that Auto Align is suggesting a few extra points for me to, to work on. If I want to, I can hit revert adjustments and it'll go back to normal. So very cool. I don't know what else there is to say about this plugin because it's amazing. Uh, I've used it so much in the past with the first version, and this thing is so much easier to use. I have nothing but good things to say about this. Um, so, uh, you know, for for what it's worth, there was uh, no no money exchanged from Auto Align. This sounds like a giant promo video for him, but I'm really just a fan, and I uh, was excited when they put out a new version. And it took a while to to get it into an episode of the show, but here we are, and I'm uh, just excited to share it with you guys. So hope you dig it as well. Let me know if you guys have any more questions in the chat. I have some fun things to tell you about in the meantime while you guys are, are putting questions in there and we're on the YouTube delay and all that. Um, this Friday, we have another live stream mix fix with Fab DuPont. It's going to be amazing. He's chosen a great song and a great artist for it. That's Friday at 2.30 p.m. So that's another uh, live stream that we get to look forward to for this week. And uh, he'll be using the Rock Ripple Comp 2 a lot on that session to show you some more tips and tricks with it. If you missed our um, episode on that a couple weeks ago, there's an episode of the Great Big Plugin Show on the new Comp 2 plugin from Process Audio. That thing is on introductory sale right now. It's amazing. If you guys are Pure Mix members, you get it for free. That's awesome, along with all the Process Audio plugins uh, and some other ones from our plugin partners as well. So definitely check that out if you're not a Pure Mix Pro member yet. We also have amazing tutorials and everything on the site. There's so many resources there. It's, it's incredible. Um, I'm very proud of us. <laughs> so uh, Primetime asks, how can we win this plugin? Well, I'm glad you asked. We happen to have a... Uh, let me switch back over to my browser here. Let's see. Let's go to our browser. And we have a uh, giveaway running on Pure Mix right now. If I go over to there, uh, there is a giveaway going for um, both the Auto Align 2 and the other plugins that Sound Particles offers here. You can actually win the entire Radical bundle right now over on Pure Mix. Um, normally $5.99, and uh, one winner is going to get a Radical bundle. Another winner is going to get a copy of Auto Line 2. And the last winner is going to get a copy of Surf EQ 2. Um, every single one of those plugins is amazing inside of that thing. They've got Drum Leveler, um, Pi is great, Power is great. Uh, Surf EQ is unbelievable. Um, one just example of that, uh, we'll, we'll have to do a plugin show on that at some point here because I love it. Um, but basically, if you've got, you know, think about a bass guitar part, usually the notes are uneven, right? Not just from the player, but the way that they come across on the instrument. Um, Surf EQ would allow you to go in and you could boost one note, and then it's going to use pitch tracking to move that point of the EQ around on the, on the spectrum to try and get you a more even sound tonally across the instrument, which is just great. Um, there's some other features in, inside of there with um, uh, how it how much gain it processes and all that stuff that are that are really useful. So definitely check out Soundradix. They're one of my favorite companies out there right now. Uh, we also did a um, 
a great big plug and show on Mutomatic where I ripped a bunch of hair off my face with a piece of duct tape to make a point. <laughs> so definitely go check that out. It was painful. It was a painful joke. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, any other questions here in the chat before we head out? Uh, it looks like uh, F Phantom asks, do you use it every time? And the answer is no. Uh, there have been examples where I put it up on a drum kit and it didn't like what it was doing. That was um, also on the previous version of Auto Align where I didn't have as much adjustment. There was some adjustment on there, but it wasn't as flexible as Auto Align 2 and it wasn't as easy to make quick changes with. So there were there have been cases where I've decided to not use um, to use it. But I don't know that I haven't used it since I got Auto Align 2, to answer your question. Uh, it just takes some finessing to make sure that you love it. Uh, Chris Tebron, good to see you. Man, um, in the case of uh, the stereo piano track, if you wanted to check coherence between those mics, would you split into two mono tracks or use the multi-mono plug-in instance? That's a great question, Chris. Uh, man, um, guys, Chris is uh, doing some of my favorite mixes out there right now. So I'm going to go back over to Pro Tools here. You got to check out his work with uh, Sewn. It's spelled like John, but with an S. And I think I've talked about Sewn on, on the show multiple times because there's some great stuff on there. Uh, okay, so let's go back over to Jealousy. There is a multi-mono instance that you can use on here. Um, I'll have to pull it back up on the piano. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's take off all these guys. All right, so no more auto align. Let's go back over to Jealousy and find our piano. Okay, let me throw auto align on here and then we'll check it out. So, boom, boom. I think I'm going to be learning this one with you. I don't know that I've done a whole lot of messing with the multi mono thing. So, okay, there's that. We got to take in 30 seconds because, yay, Pro Tools. Here we go. Okay, uh, I had a selection slightly less than 30 seconds. There was a small pop-up that came up there. It just asked you, it says, hey, that wasn't 30 seconds. Do you want to give me 30 seconds? And I told it no. So we're working off of this, but I think that's the same number we had before. I don't know. Uh, okay, so if I right-click on the piano hammer, there is a track mode thing where we have multi-channel and multi-mono. Uh, this is on the stereo track. So I'm looking at the piano hammer stereo track right now. I went into track mode and I've got these two options. So I'm actually curious, if we go multi-mono, it um, splits those out as though, I believe, Chris, I think that it's doing it as though you splitted those two tracks um, into separate mono tracks anyway. Uh, and then the string track is minus 17. So let me just check one more thing if I can group these back together. Let's go back to multi-channel. Okay, so it applied the delay to the mono mic that was probably at the back of the body and um, it's keeping the other two grouped. Let's go back to multi-mono and then let's try hitting a line again. Okay, this is interesting. So now we have a different reading. We've got minus 14 on the, what I'm presuming is, yeah, the left and then 25 on the right. Let's listen to the differences. So here's multi-mono. We started here. Okay, and now I'm gonna hit play and we'll listen to it and then I'm not gonna stop the talk because we'll forget what it sounded like. I'm gonna switch these over to multi-channel. So here we go.
Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Chris. That's that's definitely interesting. Um, I felt like there was more mid range detail in the multi mono one. Um, yeah, there's no A B in the plugin. That's correct. There's no compare button on this. Um, I think it's probably too much to handle with switching all that stuff. But yeah, that's that's another one of those cases where you probably want to go ahead and check if the multi channel or multi mono is working better. The other place to check that probably would have been the overheads too, right? Um, so yeah. Glad you brought that up. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions in here? That was that was great. Um, Neutrino says, I use it on close mics and overheads uh, for just about every mix. Sometimes room, sometimes not. Yeah. Awesome. Your mileage may vary. Cool. Um, yeah. So uh, other things coming up. Well, it, just in case there's more questions, I'll kill a little bit of time here. Um, we have another video with Luca Predalesi coming out on Thursday on puremix.com. That's Luca mixing a Doja Cat song. So uh, there's so many tricks that he does in this one that are that are super cool. And um, Luca has a hybrid analog um, and digital workflow that's that's really pretty interesting. Uh, he's also using the Rock Ripple Sidechain One in that video in a way that made me want to go buy a couple Sidechain Ones. Uh, and I had never really even heard of the thing, but his his uh, use of it was pretty incredible. So definitely check that out. Um, Cool. Uh, I think that that probably does it for us today. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and uh, I will see you again next Monday on the Great Big Plugin Show for a special one. Uh, so we're not going to do Mix Tank next Monday. We're going to be doing a special guest uh, video with Brian Lucy, who's a mastering engineer. He's worked on so many records, the Black Keys, Marilyn Manson, Greatest Showman soundtrack, uh, so many different things. Definitely check out magicgardenmastering.com. And Brian has taken his entire analog mastering rig and he sent, uh, he built a second rig, a second matched rig. He went piece by piece and uh, made sure that the units that he was buying were as similar to the one that he, the rig that he uses every day. He found units that matched up as much as he could. Um, he got it to the point where he told me that he was like, it might even be a little bit better. And then he shipped it over to the guys in Access Analog and they put a bunch of robot arms on it. And you can, um, you'll be able to, just like uh, I believe it is, um, oh man, I'm blanking on the name right now. Uh, there's another mastering rig on Access Analog as well. Pete Lyman's, uh, who's amazing as well. Uh, Pete has a mastering rig in the in the cloud as well with Access Analog. And Brian shipped his rig over. They put a bunch of knobs on it and you can use it like it's a plug-in. You're streaming audio into his rig over, I believe, in Colorado, and then you're getting the audio back so you can play around with Brian's analog mastering chain, which um, he's become pretty famous for curating that, which is really cool. So definitely check it out. Uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, so question from Semog, uh, but I mean on the go, like I did the CQ and I clicked the button and fast it went to the previous, I mean the faster way to be more corrective or accurate. Um, not sure, not sure what your question is. I think you were talking about the the delays and stuff like that. Um, yeah, Semog, marketpuremix.net if you want to ask me your question um, there and I'll try to answer it for you as much as I can. So until then, I'll see you guys next Monday. Make sure you tune in on Friday for another Mix Fix with Fab DuPont and then check out that video from Luca Predileski mixing Doja Cat on Thursday. So cool. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you next time.